Hello everybody, welcome to the Four Stacks Beer Show. I am your host, Nathan Hangen. Beside me is this bearded beauty, Mike Frey. Mm -hmm. All day, Fry. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, you can find out how to follow us on social media uh, in the show notes. We're both mostly on sort of most social networks. So uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing. Yeah. Also make sure to follow Four Stacks Brewing. That's who we work for. Yeah, yeah. Four Stacks Brewing here in Apollo Beach, Florida, which is not in the Space Coast. It's no. actually, uh, it's a gorgeous town. It doesn't have a large power plant with smokestacks no. at all. No, no. Uh, it's the, the beach is perfectly beautiful. Oh yeah, perfectly natural, man-made beach. Yep, yep. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna drink some beer. We're gonna talk about. It. Normally, we like to have one of our own beers. Today, we we um, we don't really have anything new or special to share with you. We're just well. It's mainly because we're holding off. Next week is yeah, uh, is American Craft Beer Week, so we're kind of holding off on on a lot of beers. We've got. Uh, I think right now, I think we have lined up about four beers that are to come out next week. Um, one, uh, one new one, a couple of variations of some other beers That's that we do now. Uh, just to keep things a little bit exciting. So we're, we're pretty excited for that stuff, so we hope everyone else will be too. Yeah, Great American Beer Week is next week, so yeah. we're, we're sort of, of saving it for that. So this week we're going to review uh, a local beer and then a beer, I don't know, is it local or not? Well, they're both local. They're both local? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't even look at it. Yeah. Know. It's from Brew Hub. Oh. So Lakewood. So, yeah. Not yeah. far. So today we're going to talk about beer in a, in a non-snobby way, except for probably Mike, who's going to be a snob. Yeah. And we're just going to dissect it, and we're going to talk about it, uh, the flavor, appearance, aroma, mm -hmm. that sort of mm -hmm. thing. You know, if you go to a beer contest and you're judging beer, you got a, you got a whole score sheet and you're rating it. We're sort of doing that, but doing it in a, you know. In a non-snobby way. Again, hashtag non-snobby. It's probably the 10th time we've said that today. Probably, yeah. So hashtag, hashtag definitely. Definitely. Hashtag yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so let's get started. Mike's, okay. uh, we're going to start with... Um, Let's start with this one here. Okay, so we'll start with the Knock of the Mailworks yeah. one. So this one here is, uh, is an American style sour ale. Uh, sour ale with uh, strawberries, lemons, and limes. Wow, that's quite a pack. It's, uh, a pack it, it, it is, food. it is. Uh, this is hailing from the Spring Hill, Florida area. It's a little bit uh, north and, of here. And we received this beer courtesy of um, Tanya, yes. a, a customer of ours. Mm -hmm. Who um, was is friends with with the people over at Inoculum and was yeah. helping them out. Yeah, um, just basically just promoting them out. promoting yeah. their their product and, and things like um, that. We actually have a reach. One of the reps reached out to us mm -hmm. recently, and we're hoping to get in contact with them. Bring you know check out their beer more. Yeah. So we thought, what, what better way to introduce ourselves to their beer than by yeah. starting here? And, and this is uh, is it Kubico. Yes, this is uh, Kubico. I'm probably saying it horribly wrong. It's probably something. That well, if the, we're saying it wrong, the, it's their fault. The B is probably silent somewhere. Kubico. <clears throat> there you go. I'll, I'll go Kubico. with that. So, so near is coming at clocking in at uh, four and a half percent ABV, twelve flowing ounces here inside the can. Twelve flowing ounces. 12. Is there? A, let me see this real quick before you crack it. No um, IBUs. No, no nothing uh, IBU wise on there. I would assume it's probably pretty. Oh, loud. so this is interesting. One hundred percent of the proceeds from this beer. This goes to show you its age, I guess. We're donated to help those involved with the Orlando pulse shooting. Oh. So it's a bit of an older beer, but. I think that was a year ago. <laughs> God, so. <laughs> There's no can on me, so no, I apologize to yeah. those people at Inoculum. We didn't know. Well, usually the sours hold up pretty well. They do, but yeah. you, know, I, you always want your beer to be drank fresh. Well, you do. Well, it depends on the beer, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not but a I guess that explains the hard cloudy, beer. hazy it's pretty IPA. Cool. So yeah. we, had, we had a couple of beers. We, we gave some to the staff, and we're mm -hmm. going to try this one. So go ahead and Crack open that one up. open. Oh, oh, let's see. Man. You get the pour and I can make fun of it too. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I'll still be a proper pour, so. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, well, we will. Hmm. Is that hmm as in, look, I can pour? No, it's just hmm. I'll let you decide on uh, what you think. I mean, I can already smell it. Yeah, I smell it. <clears throat> I'm going to smell a ton of strawberries in there. Yeah, that's definitely. Hashtag definitely. <laughs> the sweetness. I'll wait for you. Ladies first. My age before beauty? Yeah, strawberry in the nose all, all the way. Yeah, I, I mean, I can literally it smell it back like here. smells like almost Funky Buddha's uh, strawberry shortcake wheat wine that we did. Mm-hmm. Just not as, uh, there was, it's a different level of sweetness. Not, yeah. It's, it's, it's not uh, like a syrup, not syrupy sweetness. You can tell this are, are fresh strawberries. Like when we did our, we did our uh, strawberry wheat ale, brew berry more. Yes. We I'm did that. We, I don't know we want to do that one again. Um, we used fresh strawberries. I think we used, what, God, what, almost 40 pounds of fresh strawberries in a barrel and a half. And, um, I mean, the whole brew room here, when we're brewing it. About a pound per barrel. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it, it was insane. And it's still, part, we probably could have done more. Oh, yeah, we easily could have added, added at least 20 more pounds. 
So no, uh, strawberry nose. Oh yeah. That's about all you get, which is you know no complaints there. No, no. Strawberry right on right on the front of the palate. You know that little bit of lemon. I think it was they said some lime in there too. Yeah. I get acidic on the tongue, right? Like not bad acidic, but like. Um, it's very clean. Acid. Yeah, it's a very clean acidity on there. Mm. Man, I can Ooh, drink I like. Right here, though, right in the jowls. Oh no, not even close. Oh, yeah. No, wait till you get to that one. We'll see. We'll see. We will. It's it's that citric acid though. Maybe I'm susceptible. Susceptible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm susceptible. I forgot my speech class today. Yeah. But um, maybe I'm susceptible to that particular acidity. But it, yeah, I feel like it gets. That's it shocking. Right here, right yeah. Here. And in a good way though. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not. Uh, it's not crazy. I mean, it's not just, it's not puckering, you know, More it's really a hard time. Which is similar to that dogfish head uh, sequence, what we had. Yeah, yeah. I feel that this is probably uh, a sessionable, like a similar like style or like if you were I don't know what's a sessionable sour. I don't know what that is. I mean, you're making fun of me now. Uh, I would never. Yeah, you would never do I that. I would never. Uh, but I feel like if you were going to, remember in, on the sequence I said, I just want a little bit more tartness. I wanted a little bit more bang for my buck. Mm -hmm. I feel like this achieves that sessionable-ness mm -hmm. without going overboard on the sour. I feel like it's, it's very clean and um, the flavors are pronounced well. Like it's something that you put in a glass, it feels like a fresh beer, even though it's probably a year old now. Yeah. It feels fresh, tastes fresh. Um, maybe the carbonation is suffering a bit, but I feel like this is better execution. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is uh, fantastic. I could drink probably six or seven of these things without a, without the a problem. Of a, Four week period. How the way you drink? I mean, oh, I, no, believe me. If I if I'm in the mood to drink, liar. if if I'm in the mood to drink, I'll put four or five of them down in a heartbeat. So we got some floaties in here, which I can only assume is. Um, That's probably a little fresh fruit. It looks like it's from like, um, yeah, it's from the fruit. It's probably some like lemon. What was it? Lemon or lime? Lemon and lime. Okay. And it's strawberry. Particular from that. Yeah. If I'm guessing, which I you know again. To me, if you're gonna have stuff in the beer, it's obviously as long as it's like not fake or it's not overly um, like the issue we ran into with the strawberry shortcake. We well, we weren't sure what that was. Right. We right. thought maybe it was yeast from the bottle. Yeah. This is probably fruit, which means it's fresh fruit, which mm -hmm. I'm all, I'm good with. Yeah, yeah. Um, fresh fruit's always the best. If you if you can do fresh fruit, that's usually the best way to go. It's still a pretty clean and clear beer. Oh yeah. So, but that's one thing, though, that, you know, InBev, Budweiser, Miller Lite, all those guys, that they, they sort of tricked the public into thinking that all beer should be perfectly clean and clear, filtered and, you know, see-through. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Not the craft beer public, but the public in general. Y yes, they, they perceive it as if there's, if, if there's any type of non-clearness, I guess, for lack of a better term, that, that there's something off in the beer. Yeah, yeah. that this bad beer, it's, it's disgusting, and so on and so forth. And so these guys, I don't know if they filter or they just use findings or what, but um, my guess is they probably, they, I think they were new at the time, so my guess is unless, um, unless I don't know any better, I, I'm guessing they use some, probably some finding agents to clear probably. the beer. Yeah. And if it was filtered, you wouldn't see the particulate in there. Right. Which, which means they do a really good process, whatever they're using, and probably maybe some gelatin, um, in which case I'm in trouble. Yeah. Mr. Vegetarian guy you are. over here. Yeah, but, it's, um, you're going to hell now. If you weren't going to hell you before. Go. If you weren't going before, you sure as hell are now. Deep. God. So anyway, so clear, just uh, the reason I brought that up is because sometimes you can have a, you know, we've talked about hazy being a trend right now, but yeah. you know, a beer, does, just because it's not clear there's, or there's floaties in it or, you know, it's not see-through. Doesn't mean it's not a good beer or well, it's bad. I, I have heard that the hazy IPA is now an actual category. Really? Yeah. According to which BJCP or yeah, or it's, like it's that's the rumblings that I'm hearing is mm -hmm. that it's a submittable category. Well, that's good. That's fine. I mean, that's going to suck for them because if they send it to, you know, GABF, if it sits there for more than two weeks. Turbid IPAs, bro. Yeah. Man, I, I mean, there are some good ones. You know, there you know there are some good. Some good, yeah. I mean, it was six ounce glasses, huh? Six point seven five, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Generic, huh? Yeah, that's really good. I finished it pretty quick. We both did. Yeah, I need more of that. Yeah, that's so good. So I gotta get a respond to an email now. So, so we need to go visit them. So, Nakalim, I'm gonna now have to respond to your email and get more of your beer in here. 
I like their logo. It looks like a couple little like uh, some of the yeast vials. Yeah, vials, flasks, whatever. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you said they're where? Spring Hill. Spring Hill. So that's not far from here. Mm -mm. <clears throat> take a little we road trip. Take a trip over there, and we'll do a show from from there. Yeah, just sit right at their bar and just prop up your. Well, we'll bring them in. <clears throat> oh, we'll actually include them. Yes. I just figured we'd just prop up the tripod mics. And that everything. wouldn't be awkward. Just at all. no, not at all. Hey guys, don't mind us. We're yeah, just we're just we're literally thing. just going to do a show here really quick. We'll be in and out like an hour. Yeah. yeah. Well, I see that going over well. You know what? We're famous. The Four Stacks Beer Show is worldwide sensation. It is. It is. I had, I had a few people tell me at the festival over the weekend that they actually watched the show. Yeah, it's quite surprised. That, that's two out of the 49 views per week. Yeah. There you go. It's, uh, there you go. Hey. it's insane. Ballers. It's insane. All right. So, untapped rating on this one. Uh, you want to go first? Uh, I, you know, I'll let you go first, okay. gentlemen. I, I feel like this is a 425. I feel like it's a... The promise of the flavors is, is they deliver on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's clean, it's sessionable, like we talked about, the aroma's great. I, there's not really anything I would complain about it. Well, I would drink plenty, I'd buy a six pack and drink it. Uh, the wife and I would drink it. Um, <clears throat> if I'm gonna knock anything, it's just because I felt like it was missing carbonation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you noticed or felt the same thing. A little bit, yeah. There's really no zip to it. Uh, and that's, I, I feel like that's something I'd like to see a little bit more of. Other than that, um, you know, I really don't have any complaints about it. It's it's a good solid beer. Yeah. It's a four point two five. Yeah. I guess I should have gone first because that's what was going to be my rating as well. Yeah. And that was my that was my only complaint as well as as far as far as the carbonation. I mean, it could have been for how long it's been sitting out. You know, I don't know if there was any issues with that. Um, yeah. I believe this is. Yeah, I mean that's the only thing I can think of. Still a fantastic beer. Um, I mean, easily, easily a 4.5, 4.75 in my opinion. I mean, as far as for a sour, you know, it wasn't overly tart. It wasn't overly crazy. I didn't sit, have a hard time drinking it or anything like that. Yeah. You know, because you, you, like you're talking about feeling in the jowls and all that. I didn't. I wasn't getting any of that myself. You have tough jowls. I do. I do. Very tough jowls. I work on my jowls quite bigly. a bit. His jowls so are tough. Big they're bigly. Tough. Yeah, very bigly. So, but I thought it was fantastic beer, though. So I, I, I will sadly Kudos. agree Cheers. with you at 4.25. 4.25. Yeah. Right. So inoculum, well done. We, yeah. we really like this beer, and we look forward to having more. So we, we do got to get out there. We'll take a day. Yeah. Um, hopefully sometime soon we can get out there. So the next beer is also a sour, Mike. Yes. This is, this is from your cellar. This is from Thank a cellar. You, sir. You're very welcome. Now this is the Sun Goes Down by Brew Hub. Yes. And did you pick this up at Brew Hub, or was it Total Wine? Or this was actually at my local uh, commissary. Commissary, like at the Air Force Base? No, commissary is in the Publix down the road. <laughs> okay. Yes. They carry this at the Publix? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they carry a lot of, uh, when Dixie carries, uh, I believe it as well. Just looking for stats here, I don't see anything. We probably have to read. Alcohol warning. Oh yeah, no, just if you're there. pregnant, just don't drink it. Yeah. That's one pint, 16 flowing ounces. It's definitely a pint, to hashtag <laughs> definitely. It's interesting label artwork here. It's, it's mm -hmm. some sort of Greek, God, with I guess that would be. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, no wonder you picked it out. It all makes sense now. All right, I'll go and crack this open. I'll show you what a proper pour looks like. Already looks pretty bad. Pressure's on, right? Mm. Ooh, it's a, look at that golden hue. Mm hmm. I hear the trivia crowd picking up. Yeah. It's a Thursday today. Here in Apollo Beach, where we do trivia. Our fabulous host Chris is out there getting getting warmed up. He will probably be in here for the mystery beer. He tonight. probably will be, yeah. I just love hearing people laugh. I, you probably can't hear a camera, but just that loud like when people are drinking at a bar and they just erupt in laughter, like it's just you know you know people have let their worries go and they're just here. Yeah, too. they're just kind of letting loose a little bit. No. Unlike you. Who no, you I don't laugh at all. I don't yeah, know what that's yeah. for. I don't know what laughing is. <clears throat> okay, so nose. Unlike, and I don't know anything about this beer, so you, if there's something I'm missing, you tell me. Obviously, it's a goes. Yeah. Goose. Yeah. Goza. It's a goza. Yes. On the nose, I, I really don't get anything. You can see the color difference here. This was um, a little bit more, I guess, golden. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is some carbonation, visible carbonation. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing with sometimes when you're adding, people don't talk about this, but. Don't talk about it. When. You know, everybody wants to see a good head on a beer, right? That's mm -hmm. it. You, you like to see a little nice thick head. Yeah. 
A little nice stick head, I guess that doesn't make sense. But whatever, forgive me. New and improved. But anyway, so no, when you add things like fruit or vegetables or nuts or certain malts, mm -hmm. it basically, it could be oily, it could be, um, it could interact with the sugars and the yeast and everything in a way that, that reduces the amount of head that you get in the beer. So here we've got visual carbonation with the bubbles, but there's no head. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a cider. Yeah. So. Well, sometimes you get that with, uh, with Pilsners too. The, the head will fade and you'll just see active carbonation going up the glass. That's true, but you yeah. like to see a little bit of lacing here. We didn't have any yeah. head here at all to start any lacing. Well, you did pour it pretty poorly. Well, what I'm saying is that there's probably something in here, whether it's the malt or Could it's be. fruit, some yeah. sort of addition, yeah. or it's just lactic acid. I, th I think it's just, I, I, if I remember correctly, I mean, the, the one that I've had so far is I drank one of the four pack. Yeah. It's just, a, 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 I believe it's just a simple basic goza. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to beat up on the beer. I'm trying to explain why it wouldn't have a head and why that's okay. Right, right. Because, you know, there's a lot of beers, like we're putting hazelnut in the beer right now, and, and hazelnut is known to be oily and reduce head retention. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, dissipate the head. You have, to, you have to either counteract with extra malts, like a carapils, or maybe it's some um, adjunct malt, Yeah. or you just deal with it. Uh, nose, nothing. <laughs> what do you, what do you get in the, on the tongue? Uh, just pretty clean. I mean, nothing, just a li little bit of... Uh, a little bit of saltiness on there. I mean, very, yeah, very minute. Yeah. Good, good amount of uh, tartness on there. I mean, again, nothing, nothing. Less tartness that by about five x. Yeah, yeah. I well, I mean, I mean, you're, you're adding, you know, for, I mean, for the first one we had had lemons and limes in it, so that already adds to the it's acidity to yeah, it. Sure. So this one's just a, a very clean goza. Um, you know, again, something very crushable. I mean, you see, it comes in uh, sixteen ounce cans. Um, so you get a four pack of these. I mean, these are easy. You can sit outside for the pool. Yeah, you can easily sit outside with these and, and kind of put them down with really no, no regard. Um, and it's a pretty good tasting beer. I do was. Do you remember uh, ABV on this? I'm guessing it's. I, I'm four probably five, gonna say it's run uh, mid fours, maybe up to five. Yeah. I'd be surprised if it's anything We're more than that. that Come on, bro. We just had their head. This is March first, can on March first. Mm -hmm. um, we just had their head brewer out here a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, right? We moved into a uh, neighborhood here in the area, yeah. and he stopped by. And just for, for those of you who haven't heard of Brew Hub, Brew Hub is basically, it's, it's a contract brewing facility that is, like, the, the building is probably the size of, like, a massive, yeah, I want to say it's probably bigger than a Walmart. I mean, it's... It's probably about the same size as Walmart. Walmart worth groceries. Like a, yeah, like a super Walmart, yeah. super Target, if so you So it's know. like this massive place where you can go, and, like, if you're running, like, for us, if we wanted to brew more beer, we don't have any more equipment, yeah. more space, we would hire them to brew our recipes mm -hmm. and they have a brew a whole great brew team they got a canning line bottling line all right. that stuff out there so and then they also brew their own beer i mean they brew a series yeah. of which is beer what this now. is right they're, they're right. private label but uh it's which is smart um yeah but you know cigar city goes out there j dubs i was gonna say j dubs it. now uh, uh top Green goliath Man. yeah so it used to be contract brewing was like a bad thing yeah in yeah. fact, Sam Adams had to fight against a huge campaign against the big guys yeah. who were saying that it was a bad thing because yeah. um, that's how they started. But now it's sort of not a big deal. Yeah. So that's what Brew Hub is, and they brew their own beer, and it's a private label. I, th I think it's um, it's a good beer. I feel like I'd like to have a little bit more tartness yeah. if it's going to be a Goza. Um, but then again... You don't want to get it too crazy, though. No, you don't. Are, it depends on, the, on are they going for like the Florida the Florida Weiss? I don't think they're going for Florida Weiss. Yeah. Are they going yeah. for like um, traditional German style? Um, you can definitely tell that the, the grain bill here is um, it's got some more like a sweeter malt. It's probably got a little bit higher final gravity. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't finish as dry, which is not a bad thing. I'm just no. trying to describe for the audience who's not drinking them. Well, we will give you the information. There's a nice little bit of tartness there. And they will follow, you can follow along and drink the beer with us, too. Yes. By the time this is out there, they will yeah. have seen an opportunity to purchase the beer. Right? Yes. So yes. you can go to Pub Publix. Publix. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Um, Very fancy. Yeah. I think a four pack, I think it was nine bucks for the four pack, if I remember correctly. So this is about Not like bad. Reef Donkey. Yeah. Well, a little cheaper than Reef Donkey. Which is ten bucks for four yeah. pack, which is ridiculous. I know. Guys, money, money grubbing <laughs> jerk bags. No, Reef Donkey is a fantastic beer. I buy it all the time. Yeah. Um, Reef Donkey. I used to remember. I remember when they would when they started making Reef Donkey. Wow, and way back then. Yeah. When I would go to Tampa Bay Bruco in, in Ybor City, 
And they'd be like, oh, we got this new beer called Reef Donkey. I was like, let me try it. I was like, oh, this is delicious. What's in it? And then they told me, I was like, oh, I got to brew this at home. And then, um, oh, yeah. actually, you know, Reef Donkey took off and I would go there, like specifically to get, I'd go there for dinner just mm-hmm. to get Reef Donkey. And then they would be out of Reef Donkey. Oh. And I was like, you bastards. And, you know, now we own a brewery and it's like, Duh, like, nice, yeah, 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 nice, exactly. That was us all the damn time. Yeah. So um, I feel bad for for all those times where I was frustrated about that. But um, anyway, this beer itself. Is there any other comments you have about it? Or? No, I, I I think it's just a uh, it's just a, a basic. Well, to me, at least, I feel like it's just a basic. Goes none in a bad way. There's something in here that I'm getting. That's I don't know, like a honey vanilla. Honey vanilla. But it's, it's not that far on the spectrum. I'm trying to pull your attention to it. Almost like a, like a fresh apple squeeze. Like, um, I don't know how to describe it other than like fresh sugar. Um, but it's good. It's a good thing. Yeah. But, but I, I, I'm just trying like to... Like a cidery? A flavor, little like bit. A, like a pear cider? Pear, it might be a good, pear cider might be a good mm-hmm. descriptor. Maybe that's because we were just talking about yeah. pear cider. But there, it is there. Do you get it at all? I, I, I get a, a little bit of it. I, I see what you're, you're saying there. Um, I think that that's more more apt to the uh, to the green, but you're talking about that level of sweetness that you're getting Maybe there. Salt, too. Minerals. But it, that little bit of like lingering, like, hmm, what is that? That's the sort of thing that makes a good beer to me. Yeah. It's not like, you know, obviously there's a beer you just Well, there's a good linger. There's a, there's a good yeah. linger and there's a bad linger. We talked about bad lingers before with sweetness and hashtag sweetness. This is like a, it's like a, it's like an everlasting gobstopper where it's that flavor. You're like, oh, wait a minute. It just changed to something. What is that? And you're thinking about it. And you got to keep drinking it. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're into your second can. You're like, yeah. damn, I got to buy more. So that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. So. I'll let you go first. Are we doing untap ratings now? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Let me get a little bit more. Was, oh, that, a, was that a Hulkamania in there? Or? Was a Hulkamania? No, that, no, that was Brand, Brand Macho Man. I'm sorry. God, Jesus. We are God, so un American. Bless his soul, rest his soul, whatever. He did pass, right? Yes, he did pass away. God. What, was his, what was his woman um, in the I ring? I don't know. I'm not that old. Really? Yeah. I'm sure there's listeners out there who are totally... You get the LME, I mean, I'm... You're, you're the one chastising me for not knowing that you snapped into a Slim Jim guy. But he had a... Um, yeah, he had a ring girl who was okay. with him. But. You say so. I mean, I, I don't know if... Back then, I wasn't... I, I wasn't a, I'm not really I a big wrestling. I was Ultimate Warrior. Of course you were. Uh, unfortunately, he died of steroid use. But, like, all of them, I guess. I would say all of them. He was pretty. He was pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, actually, Rowdy Roddy Piper was pretty badass too. <laughs> and then you can't forget the Ric Flair. Woo! Yeah, my my buddy Mark's a big Ric Flair fan. So his. Say that uh, again, a Ric Flair fan. Yeah, a Ric Flair fan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now we know we're into it. Now yep. we got a show. Yep. Now we're getting crazy. So un- since Mike's delaying, uh, clearly delaying his review, I'm going to give this one a. Whew. I'm lingering between a three seven five and a four. Then I'll go first then. Okay. So I, I'm I'm gonna say a four. Okay. Um, you know, for me, <clears throat> we talked about the carbonation. I think just a, just a hair more. I mean, I, you know, yeah, for for the, for the style, I, I'm you know for the style, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, there's really nothing. You know, it's it's not an over top. There's not any adjuncts or additives to it or anything like that. I think it's a very clean beer. I think yeah. a four is, is, a, is a pretty great rating for this one. Um, I looked it up uh, actually a few months ago, looking to see what average ratings were. Uh, people were giving average ratings of like three and a half, things like that. I think this is a lot better than three and a half. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is definitely easily a, a, a four, in, in my opinion. I think this is just a very, very clean goza. And a lot of people are looking for crazy adjuncts and shit like that added uh, to yeah. it. Um, I just think this is a, a very good traditional style goza. I think this is pretty damn good. Well, if you're gonna go four, I'm gonna go three, seven, five. Jesus. And and here's why. If I'm comparing the two beers, I think this is a better beer than Kubico. Um, the fruit is part of it, but I also think it has. It's it's a cleaner finish, in a way that 
we talked, you know, we just talked about how there's something lingering there that I like, but I don't feel like that's enough. Um, it's a little too sweet. I'd like it to be a little bit drier. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good beer. I would not be ashamed to have it in my fridge. In fact, I, I might go to the store and buy it. 375 is actually, you know, it's not a bad rating. No. I wish on Untapped there was like a 3.8 or a, like a 3.9. I wish you could go 3.9. Like, yeah, yeah, you get real specific with I'd it. Because I'd go higher. Um, but I, I would just, you know, more carbonation. I'd like a little bit more complexity. And a little bit less sweetness. Those are my three things. Yeah. But I think it's a good beer. Yeah. All right, you know, thanks for sharing your cellar with us. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Prost. Prost. So that's, that's the beer on the table. Now the next part is the fun part. Yeah. That's we're going to get donned up with blindfolds and we're going to... Um, get real crazy. Yeah. It can't be Chris because Chris is uh, playing trivia. Right he now. is. So we have to get either... Uh, I wonder if Heather's here. Dave? Or, uh, Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here, man. Um, God, I like Dave. Uh, you could see if Heather's here, see yeah. if she wants to be part of it. I doubt she actually wants to be on camera, which is going to be the fun part. Just don't tell her the camera's on. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have someone bring in a beer and they're going to pour it. We're going to try to guess a bunch of things about that beer. And um, I'm the reigning champion. Much to his dismay, but here it is. So stay tuned. For you, it'll be like five seconds. For us, it'll be like five minutes. So we'll see you in a second. All right, we're back. So uh, Dave is with us. Thank you, Dave. He's going to, um, he went today and got a mystery beer from which grocery store, Dave? I went to Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie. So it's a local Winn-Dixie here. He's going to crack it open for us, pour it, and then get back to uh, serving beer here at Trivia. But uh, we're going to try and guess um, the style. We're going to try and guess who made it. And then if we're lucky, guess which actual beer it is. Uh, the last time it was Celebration. Yeah. And uh, you old, failed 9-1. Even though it was old, yes. Six-month-old celebration. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Yeah. Fine old beer. Maybe Dave bought a little beer. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's good? Slam you got it. it? Got it. Thank you, sir. All right. So the bottle from Winn-Dixie. <sighs> Smells oh, skunky. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Dave. Hey. All right. So I got a check. So welcome, Dave. Dave has actually been on our team for, I don't know, a month and a half? Uh, almost two months now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, very experienced in the industry. Yeah. Really cool dude. So we're happy to have Dave. Um, I would say Dave brought us a skunky beer. Like a, like a, I, I want to say it's like a, God, it's... It's like a Negro Modelo, or like we always talk oh, about that sort of. Say, I don't even think it's that though. It's not even that. Oh, well, it's in a bottle. Well, it's in a bottle. This skunky and it's. Oh. So yeah, just skunk in the nose, right? So when you think skunk, you think Heineken. That's that's the first thing I thought of was Heineken. When was the last time you had a Heineken? Man, I can't. I can't think that far back. And what they say is Heineken is skunky because it's oxygenated or it's too much sunlight through the green bottle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't this Heineken? I mean, it smells like Heineken. Mm -hmm. It does smell just like Heineken. Yeah. I, it's not Heineken. My only guess after that would be like a like a Mexican lager, but I know. I'm pretty but sure this feels like hot like Heineken. A, a Del Sacchis or a... Uh, it it a smells or... like I had some Modelo today. Uh, smells similar. So it's it's skunky. The flavor is sweet uh, corn sugar, but not it's not bad. Like it's not um, natural light bad. bad. If it's not... Then it's gonna be the Dos Equis. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, is, the, is the other one in a round bottle? Yeah, that's no Dos Equis uh, and Amber. So there's there's a particular uh, hashtag sweetness to it that I've been picking up. So I think I'm, I'm gonna dwell it down. I'm gonna say it's in a green bottle. Yeah, I, I agree. It's really tough. I wish, is the, where's the bottle? Do we even know? Like, I'm sitting there reaching for, like, stuff that's not even there. Oh, you're just sort of knocking down the glassware in a heartbeat. 
See, it doesn't have a lingering skunkiness. No. Which if it was Heineken, I feel like it would linger with every... Every gulp. Yeah. But, no. It's, ju it's just got that Mexican lager sweetness. It, it does, and that's what I was gonna Chips say. and it salsa. Tastes like, uh, like it needs like a lime. Just, just straight, just pills and malt all the way through. Nothing, nothing crazy. Probably extremely low on you. Really sweet. I feel like I'm already starting to get a headache from it. Adjuncts, corn. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like a lingering residual. Blah, blah. Like, I'm gonna rate this. I used to, like, six, seven years ago, I used to drink just tons of. Rating wise? Oh, it just sits there on the tongue. Mm -hmm. 2753, something like that. 275. It's, it's, too, too it's, it's, a, it's a Mexican lager. That's a, it's gotta be. So it's either Modelo, like, uh, yeah, I feel like you're calling Dos Equis regular is, is pretty close, yeah, pretty yeah, accurate. Yeah, and I'm trying to, there's a name to it. Because uh, I don't think that Modelo would be. Modelo it's just Dos Equis. It's Dos Equis and then Dos Equis Amber. Yeah, so I think it's a regular Dos Equis. I know we'll probably pull this off and it's going to be... I'm trying to think of any other... Like, it, it'll be some, some fucking random bottle. Green bottle beer is the only green bottle. you got Heineken, you got Dos Equis, you've got um, what, St. Pauli Girl. Rolling Rock. It's not Rolling Rock. For sure? Yeah, for sure. It's... Heineken has a cleaner finish. It does have... It's got... It's less sweet. It has more hops. Um... This is, I agree, it's Dos Equis regular. And if it's not, it, it's going to be a variation of a Mexican lager. You think so? Mm-hmm. It just sits there with that sweet corn caramel blah on your tongue. I, 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 just said, I, I think it's uh, regular Dos Equis. Dos Equis green bottle. Is that what we're going to go for? Yeah, All right, let's do it. Where's it at? Where did I put it? Red stripe. red stripe. Whoa! Shut the hell up. That's not red stripe. How old is this? That's a horrible beer. God, I can't hardly see. So my my apologies. Good job, Dave. I mean, you got us. That's a good. Oh wait, there is. It's half rubbed off. <laughs> All I see is seventeen. Yeah. So Damn. red stripe is a Jamaican lager. 4.7%. Uh, so. You drink a lot of Red Stripe. That's not that well, I used to drink when I was feeling like, oh, I'm feeling rich today. I just got paid. Let me go get some Red Stripe. Dude, I'm like 18 years old. Well, not 18. I guess 21. Oh, back then, that's, well, I mean, back then in the 70s, yeah, I guess the drinking age was a little bit lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, back then we were more into reefer than, than beer. Uh, you guys were just into beer. No, is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we lose. Dave wins this one. Yeah. Well done, Dave. You know, maybe Dave didn't win. Maybe Red Stripe won by make, making a fucking... It's a brown bull, you'd think. Well, here, here's the fun part. Is if you look in the back here, you type little letters, questions. You can email them at HeinekenUSA. You fucking kidding Staffcom.com. Yeah, it's a Heineken product. So it's Heineken with a brown a bottle. bottle. Yeah. <sighs> Your whole life just... Yeah. Your whole uh. life is alive. It is, exactly. That's how I feel about this. I mean, the, the beer was not good. It wasn't as bad as like a... You're trash talking Mexican lagers. And it's a Mexican lager, like I had Negro Modelo today, it was not good, but I drank it. Um, it's dark, so I imagine myself like, oh, this is a really dark, this is Mr. Anderson. The darkness. The darkness, Bane, yeah. Um, so we lose, Dave wins. Good job, Dave. Thank you for um, supporting oh, our... Uh, yeah. We're gonna have to have a new a new guy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll do that right now. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's depressing. Uh, at least you didn't win, yeah. and I didn't. You know. Yeah, that's hey. we, we we have to get the tally up because yeah. I know it's like I've won like for every one for you. That's fine. Well, I mean, the one episode where I actually did win, like big time over you, you completely failed. The mics weren't working. Big, is that like Big Lee? Yeah. You won Big Lee. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, something wasn't working properly, so we couldn't show the episode. You know, it's the, you know, post-production, I can't control yeah. one. Once I turn the film over, I can't control it. Yeah. I blame Siri. 
Siri. Yeah, probably right. Siri does. I mean, I'm an iPhone guy, but Siri sucks. But anyway, this is another episode of the Four Stacks Beer Show. Thanks for joining us. Um, but in general, come see come see us at Four Stacks. If you're ever in Four Stacks and we're here, we'd be happy to share. Beach. Well, if you're in a pub, but if you're, if you're in Four Stacks, like if you're in the bar and oh, we're here, yeah. like yeah, we'll, we'll share beer together and. Well, that doesn't count for those of you who live in the Palo Beach. Yeah. I mean, we share beer, beers with you all the time. Yeah, but like, if you come visit, come say hi. Say I saw you on the beer show. We'd love to hear uh, what uh, you think. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot.